Hey guys, hey everyone. Hi, hi, hello, 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 hello. Those who are catching this by the replay, hey guys, thank you guys for joining the replay. I know the lighting is like horrific right now, but I am preparing for an event later on today, this evening actually. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about the day of. So why not talk about the day of? Guess what? Yeah, it's kind of stressful. The day of anything is kind of stressful. The day of the wedding, the day of um, graduation, the day of a special party. Let's be honest, the day of usually is kind of hectic. <laughs> hey, Allison, the day of is usually kind of hectic. There's a lot going on. Um, and let's be honest, we are entrepreneurs. So we're not just doing just this. We're not just doing, you know, just speaking on stages. Although that's something that some people would like to be able to do, that's not necessarily what's being done at the moment. At the moment, we still have a business. We still have a family. We still have uh, things to do outside of whatever speaking event is going on. And I'm saying that because when I started this journey, literally, I was still working a full-time job. I'm currently not. I'm doing this full-time. But when I started, I was still working a full-time job. So I still had to make sure that there was food in the house. I still had to make sure that the children were taken care of. It was somebody to watch them if I was going to be out of town. I still had to make sure that they got to um, any activities that they had to get to, you know, while I was gone or that they had to be a part of while I was gone. I had to make sure that they had a ride. Um, there's a lot that goes on for the day of. For no one, it is perfect. It is amazing. Hey, Fatima. So we don't really, um, I think we kind of get hung up with the, the idea of the day of. When we get to that point, it's going to be perfect. Hey, sis. When we get to that that level or whatever level it is that we're saying we need to get to, it's going to be completely perfect, right? It's going to be like we wake up and the birds are chirping and the squirrels are playing in the yard and we bat our eyes and the birds bring us our clothes. Like we have that Cinderella moment. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that if there's a, if there's a bird in your house, that you're not going to be excited about it being anywhere near your clothes. Right? <laughs> you're going to be excited. You're not going to be excited about it being anywhere near your clothes. Because if there's a bird in your house, you're going to be more scared about it having some type of disease or pooping on the carpet. <laughs> right, Fatima? Fatima said, oh, heck no. I don't like animals. Right? So, let's be honest. Let's be real. The day of can be very stressful, but that's why you really need to come up with a plan of action. Yes, you have to plan for even the day of a plan of action so that way things go smoothly. The plan of action should be include making sure there's a set time or time before you have to leave that you make sure you have all your supplies. So I currently have a bag. Um, it's a 31 bag. I love this bag. Let me show you. I'm always getting up when I'm talking to y'all. I'm always getting up. So I have my, my handy dandy. I feel like it's a Barney bag. <laughs> I feel like it's a Barney bag almost. But see it? It is my travel bag. This one has my books in it. Yeah, I feel like it's a Barney bag. I'm going to tell you why. So... I have my books. Define your voice. Hey, Felsa. Hey, Mike. I have my books. It's okay to cry. So I have my books, right? I have... Gotta have my unicorns. <laughs> yes, I take my unicorns with me, and I usually place them on the table. Now, because of where we're going to be at, I'm not sure if I'm going to place them on the table where we are. Um... I may do and set them up so that way I can at least take a picture. Um, but that's something else that you guys see me do. I always take pictures of my unicorns depending on where I am. If my table is set up with my unicorns, I take pictures and I always post them. So, as a speaker on the day of, as an author on the day of, 
you need to have a bag that is specifically just for your event stuff. Like literally, nothing else should be used in this bag. This bag should never be emptied. It should only have your supplies in there. So, my stand to hold my book, which granted, I got this at the dollar store, y'all. Yeah, come through. My stand to hold my book, my unicorns, uh, I normally have pens in here, but of course I don't see that right now because I'm looking for it. Hey, Deidre. It has a pocket over here. It has some pockets on the sides, all around. It has pockets on the inside, which I need to make sure that I have pens while I'm talking to y'all. Look, pens. And you always take more than one pen. Why? Because we all know as authors and speakers that when it comes time for us to write something down, we're always looking for a pen. <laughs> and so this is in my Barney bag. <laughs> hey, Michelle. This is all in my Barney bag. And so now, I, now, this is something else. A little tip that if you go to the dollar store, there is a clear container that you can buy for a dollar. And it has a top. It usually has like a white top. It's great because it fits into my bag. And I'll show you what's in there. I have bags for when people buy books. I have my bookmarks. Which I don't know if I showed you guys my bookmarks. But I have bookmarks. Instead of having business cards, I have bookmarks. Um, and the bookmark actually has my... Well, it helps if I do it the right way. It has my books. And I know it's like backwards because we're on Facebook. But it has my books, it has a QVC code for them to be able to buy the books. It has my information at the bottom. And then on the other side, it has me, equipping women to define, accept, and use their unique voice. It has my picture, my logo, and same thing, my information at the bottom. So you should always nail, a lot of people don't use business cards like we used to. That's okay. Hey, Kita! That's okay. So, I have, I have my bookmarks, I have my PayPal swipe, I actually got two of them. Don't ask me why I had two, I don't know why I had two. I think somebody gave me one and then I had ordered one. <laughs> hey Kita! And so, I also have the square, but I don't use the square, I use the, um, I use the PayPal. But then if you need like any special chargers or a special lapel mic or anything, this is a great way for you to have all of that stuff right at hand. Like you don't have to fuss and fumble over it. You don't have to worry about if it's going to be there. Hey, Deidre, you don't have to worry about if it's going to be there. Boom, right there, right? Clear container so you know exactly what's in it. It has a top so you don't have to worry about everything falling out. And like I said, it goes right into my Barney bag. So that bag gets, you always make sure that you have enough supplies. Um, this is a question that somebody asked me before, is how much, um, when it comes to supplies, how much do you take? Well, now that, an that question can be answered in two ways. The question is answered in two ways, this is why. Number one is how many do you want to sell? I can't tell you how many to sell. I can't tell me tell you how many you want to sell. Remember, we said as a speaker, you need to have a budget. You need to have a marketing plan. You need to have a, a profit plan. And those in the Reactivate Toolkit call, they know that we went over one last weekend. You need to have a profit plan. Why? Because I need to know how many books I need to sell. I can't tell you how many books to take with you. Because I don't know how many you need to sell. You get it? <laughs> and so that's how many you would have in your bag though. And you would have your bag packed and ready to go hours before you leave. You never wait until the last minute because if you wait until the last minute, then you'll always forget something. Something else that you make sure that you do before you leave is you charge everything. Everything, everything. 
You make sure that you have your chargers. You make sure you have extra chargers. You make sure everything has been plugged in and charged up. So right now, my ring light is actually getting charged. Um, my emergency charger is getting charged. All of that is being taken care of literally like as we speak. I didn't just put it on there, but I just want to make sure that it's fully charged before I leave. As being a speaker, a lot of times we forget the littlest things when it comes to going to an event. We forget to bring an extra charger. We forget that we can actually, like in my Barney bag, I would also have a, um, a power strip in case I need it, depending on where I am. Um, because of the location we're going to today, I don't need a power strip. But if we were going to a hotel or something of that nature... A power strip comes in handy. Why? Because how many of you know that when you're at an event, if there are any outlets in the room, everybody is flocking to the outlets. They are. As if it was a store or something, right? They are flocking to the outlets. And so in order for you to make sure that you have what you need to charge your things, a power strip is a good thing to have. Yeah, that would be in my Barney bag as well. <laughs> so, the power strip, your bookmarks or business cards, your books, anything that's on your table for your table display. Um, normally, I'll have a tablecloth as well, but of course, where we're going today, I don't need a tablecloth. So, I don't have that in my Barney bag, but that's another reason why you pack your Barney bag. I keep calling it a Barney bag. You can pack your bag ahead of time. So that way you're not waiting until the last minute and possibly forgetting something. So we have pens, we have books. What else goes on on the day of an event? I can tell you that my nerves are all over the place. <laughs> it's always the day of an event that my nerves are like everywhere. I'm excited, I'm nervous. You never know who's going to be at the event. You're excited to meet some of the people that have been following you online or connecting with you online. So it's definitely a great experience. And somebody somewhere would say, oh, it's because of the nervousness that I don't want to start. It's because of the nervousness of, you know, not knowing who you're going to meet. That's why I haven't started and, you know, in becoming the motivational speaker. And to that person, I would say... You know, fear is always going to be there. You're always going to be fearful of something, especially when it comes to something new. Hey, Aunt Andrea, especially when it comes to something new, you're always going to be fearful of something, some part of it. So if you're fearful to move, then you never know who you will meet. Um, you know, it's six degrees of separation. You never know who is going to be uh, open up a door of opportunity for you that may make put you in a position to become Oprah Winfrey. You never know who's going to open up a door of opportunity. Hey, Dr. Clay, who's going to open up a door of opportunity for you to put you in the position of being in the next Tyler Perry, to put you in the position of being the next Gary V. You never know. And so fear of moving forward and meeting new people. Hey, Michael is literally holding you hostage. It holds your purpose hostage. It holds you hostage. We have so much more that we can do. And so on the day of, even though I'm fearful, I'm not going to allow that fear to make me stay home. This is the thing. A lot of times that day of can get so hectic. You're trying to figure out what to wear. You're trying to figure out how to do your hair. If your hair hasn't already been done, you, some people may be ripping and running around. You put on the dress and the zipper breaks. I've had that happen. <laughs> For those who do not know, um, I talked about it in uh, like a while back. But literally, um, my first live interview that I did after having the book published, it was I think last August. And I was at the event. Before I got to the event, I had bought this dress weeks in advance Silly me, never tried it on. Don't judge. I don't like trying on clothes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Michael. Don't judge. I don't like trying on clothes. But silly me, I never tried it on. And so when I tried on the dress the day of, 
guess what happens? The zipper breaks. And it didn't break to the point where it was like, okay, let me just take it off and find something else to wear. It literally broke and I couldn't get it off. <laughs> like, it was horrible, guys. Horrible. Literally, it broke and the zipper was on the side of the dress. It broke and I could not take the dress off without spending at least another 15, 20 minutes to try to get, you know, get out the dress and then still have to find something else to wear. Horrific, right? So what did I do? I put on a jacket and I just went with it. So wait, yeah, did I just say that I put on a jacket in the middle of August? Pretty much. <laughs> now, those at the event may have never known. They didn't see it, so they never knew that I was going through this this um, this technical foul, this failure <laughs> in my mind. It was like, no, flag on the play, no, that's wrong. But they would, they never knew because I didn't allow it to affect how I presented when I came to the event. I have to say that in no matter what goes on, don't allow it to affect how you present when you go to the event. There's a certain thing when you can present in such a way that people don't know what you've been through. That part. It allows them to see, wow, if they could do it through all of that. Right, Michael? <laughs> if, if she can do it through all of that then I can do it through my fear. If she can do it with her dress half open, oh, it's horrible. With her dress half opened, then I can do it as well. And listen, I took pictures and everything, guys. Like, I'm standing next to people in pictures, trying to make sure that my jacket doesn't open up too far so you can't see it. Oh, it was horrible. Yes, so that is one of my stories of... You know, the day of type stories of, you know, things going wrong on the day of an event. And, you know, it happens. It does. But, you know, I put the jacket on and I kept it moving. <laughs> I definitely didn't let it stop me. And this was the other thing. Okay, so something that I, I've learned along the way is that you always make sure that you have books on hand. I learned that the hard way. Because guess what? I went to this event and I didn't have a lot of books. And so when people wanted to buy books and they sold out, then I was stuck. Because I was like, uh, well, you can go online. Well, how many of you know, and this is a tip for you guys, if this is your first time writing a book, if this is your first time being a speaker, this is a great tip for you. Guess what? The best time to keep and catch their attention is when they are at the event with you. I'll repeat that. The best time to keep and gain, to gain and keep their attention is when they are at the event with you. If you are thinking that they will get something or purchase something after they leave the event... Most times you will be wrong. Don't get me wrong. There are some, there are a few that will go online and purchase a book. There are a few that will go online and um, look at your products and services. There are some that do, but your percentage or your conversion rate out, you know, I'll explain that a little bit in a second. Your conversion rate will definitely drop if you do not have products and services that you can hand them right then and there. It does. And that's just, that's just people. People want something they can have access to right now. They want to put their hands on it. They want it to be real. They want to touch it, feel it. Touch it, feel it. Feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, it. Look, I went into my Busta Rhymes moment. <laughs> They want to touch it. They want to feel it. They want to see it and make sure it's real. But if you don't have the products and services right there with you, well, services you can't really have. You can have information for them to get your website. But your products, if you don't have them there, people can't buy. They can't buy. 
And so you leave it up to uh, happenstance that they remember when they get home to go to your website. You leave it in happenstance that when they get home, they're going to go on Amazon and buy your book. That part. So having making sure that you have product on hand is very important. I learned that as well, too. That first event, I learned so much from that first event. For one, of course, we're going to make sure that we try on our clothes from now on. We're not just going to let that ride out. <laughs> but we're definitely going to make sure we try on our clothes. But um, you want to be prepared and have something to offer people who are there in the moment. That part. So I do have books that I'll be having with me today. Later on today when I get to Baltimore, be more, be more. And then another thing that you want to think about on the day of, woo, is that you want to take some downtime. Listen, <laughs> exactly. Because listen, how many of y'all know that not everybody comes to an event with a pen and paper to write stuff down? So what if they wrote down your link wrong? What if they they wrote down your name wrong? Y'all know it's hard to spell my name. So what if they wrote down your name wrong? You're kind of like leaving it up to happenstance that they'll find you. <laughs> exactly. So that other piece that I learned is that you really have to take some time, some downtime to just relax. So whatever that means for you, if that means dancing to some silly music, on you know on that day or dancing to your favorite music if that means um if that means like i said dancing to some music that you love if that means taking some time to just sit and relax right now i have my um i have my diffusers on i have a uh, lime and frankincense oil in those so they're running I have the lights out, so it's, it's nice and peaceful. There's nobody here but me and my son at the moment, but it's nice and peaceful. So I'm not doing a whole lot. I did have work that I had to do for my business. I did that earlier in the day, so that way I could take some time and just relax. I'm going to make sure that I get some, some my reading in. I still got to go and make sure that I do my language, because I told you guys I'm doing 30 minutes of learning French each day. And so I still got to go and do that. So the day of, you want to make sure that you have some breathing room. Don't schedule things so tight that you're going from A to B to C to D to E to F. And then by the time you get all the way to the event, you're done. You're exhausted. You don't have the energy that you need in order to um, do the, in order to give the audience 100% of you. Uh, when you do an event, it is it takes a lot out of you. It does. People would think, oh, you're just talking. Oh, you're just standing there selling uh, t-shirts or you're sell selling jewelry or you're selling books. No, it takes a lot out of you. The preparation, the mental preparation, the engaging with people and you're always moving. You're hardly ever sitting still. You're always talking to people and um, networking with people. So it does take a lot out of you. So that's why I also want to say that make sure that before time you have some downtime and then after the event you want to have some downtime. If it's at a hotel after the event to so just calm down and relax yourself. If it's literally going um, going home and just shutting down, doing do not disturb and just shutting down for maybe a half hour to an hour. Take some time for you. One of the things that my one of my uh, that my personal trainer has been like drilling into my head is being fit for service. What does that mean? That means that there's breathing exercises that you should be learning. That means that there's uh, you should be taking care of your body. You should be drinking enough water. Uh, that means that you should always make sure that you eat. That is a big one. Speakers and authors, when they're doing an event, they don't always eat. So they're the ones that are super exhausted by the end of the night. They have absolutely no energy. They're drained because they haven't put anything to fuel their body to go through the process. Knowing that we're going to be exerting more energy, 
means that you should be doing more of taking care of your body, not less. But as a speaker, we oftentimes take less care of our body. Mmm, that part. So I have my water. This is my second bottle of water today. Um, this one will be done pretty soon. And it's actually lemon water. It's not just plain water. It's lemon water. My second bottle today. I have water in the refrigerator. I have another bottle of lemon water that I'll make sure I take <laughs> and drink today before I leave. Well, I don't know if before I leave. I'll take it with me. Lemon water is a great detox and great detox. That's the other thing. Can we can we be honest and say this? Can I say this to you as speakers? I understand that a lot of times we want to do mix and mingle before the event. We may go to a restaurant with some of the other speakers or something like that. You never know. Can we not eat something or try something new right before an event? Can we not do that, please? <laughs> No trying, no new dishes right before the event and then like your face blows up because you had an allergic reaction or trying something new right before the event and then it doesn't agree with your system. Can we not do that, please? <laughs> I can tell I have heard some war stories about people going out before an event and they were like, oh, you know, I just wanted to make sure I got something in my system and what they put in their system, like, I guess their system didn't like it. That is <laughs> <It's> not. <laughs> it is so not a good throwback story that you want to have about an event that you did. That you, you went to the event and you couldn't make it out the bathroom. Or you went to the be event and you were like doubled over in pain or your throat was closing. Like, that's not a good story. <laughs> hey, Nina, that's not a good story to have. Let's, let's, let's not have that story. So, but I want you to understand that you really do have to take care of your body. You have to take care of yourself. So I did my 30 minutes of exercising this morning. Listen. <laughs> Exactly. Everything is simple when you don't have to do it. You're right. You're right. A fatal flaw that most people make is that they think it is easy. Yes. LeBron James made dunking a basketball look easy. Listen, you better say that. But but when we look at the work that's done behind it, we see that all of these stars, it's not easy. We see that Beyonce does 14-hour um, rehearsal days before she has a live event. So when y'all see her and y'all are like, oh my goodness, she looks amazing. She's dancing in heels. Yeah, you would be able to dance in heels too if you practice in heels for 14 hours for several days straight. That part. <laughs> so don't think it's, oh, it's just glamorous. It's almost along the same lines that if you look at a ballerina, if you look at their if you look at them being up on their toes, it looks amazing. They're graceful, it's beautiful, you love it. But when you look at their toes and everything that they have to go through and the pain that they put their feet and their joints and their legs through, guys, it's not as glamorous as you would think, although they make it look like it is. And see, that's the thing. We make it look easy sometimes, but there are a lot of things that go behind the scenes. Because guess what? Schedules don't always go right. Can, can we be honest? Sched uh, traffic is, is, is a, plays a big part in it. People may, something may happen. Like I told y'all about the people who, you know, eat something that didn't agree with their system. And now they have to cancel. You have people that don't have to cancel. Um, situations will arise that'll make people have to um, cancel or reschedule or not be able to show up. Um, or you get to an event and you're thinking that it's going to be one number of people there, you know, one amount or um, you're thinking that it's going to be a full packed house and you get to the event and there's no one there. There's like five people. It happens. It does. So it's, we can't be, um, we can't be prepared for everything, 
but there are things that we can be prepared for. So like having our supplies ready, making sure we're taking care of our body, making sure we're drinking enough water so we're not dehydrated, making sure that we're taking some downtime to clear our minds. Uh, a lot of times you'll see that some speakers will not even talk to people before an event. Matter of fact, they won't even come out into the common area or come out to where everybody's seated until right before they are about to go on. There's a reason for that. It's because they're taking that moment to just calm themselves, calm their spirit, calm their mind, calm their nerves. If they're nervous, they're taking that moment to just relax. So don't think that they're trying to be high sedity <laughs> and you're like, why are they here yet? Or why didn't they cut show up in the room yet? Sometimes they just need to bring it back and take care of themselves first. So that way they can come and be fit for service. They can be the best version of themselves for you. And so that's that behind the scenes stuff that we really don't always see. <laughs> we don't always see, but it's there. It is definitely there. Hey, Deborah, thank you for sharing. Um, it's definitely there. And so those who are catching this on the replay, thank you for catching the replay. Those who are catching it live, hey, guys. Replay viewers, you can still swipe and invite and share this out. Um, this is episode 13 of Speak Easy, where I come to you and I show you the behind the scenes of what it means to be a, a speaker or an author and what are some of the things that we go through. And so this part is the day of. Literally, I have an event this evening, and I will be getting on the road within an hour and a half. Within an hour to an hour and a half, I'll be getting on the road to be on my way there. I'm super excited about that already. Um, but, you know, you have to make sure that you have your supplies all in order. I showed them my Barney bag. <laughs> hey, Aubrey. I showed them uh, my Barney bag. And it has my supplies in it, and it, it was sitting by the door. I brought it over so I could show you guys what was in it. I showed them what was in the bag and gave some tips on some other things that you, as an author or speaker, would have in your bag. Um, I talked about having that downtime, that relaxation. I also talked about being fit for service and making sure that you're taking care of your body and drinking water. I have This is my second bottle of water today. Y'all know that it's hot outside anyway, so you better be drinking water. And because you hear a lot of people um, fainting and being dehydrated. And it's because we're so excited about the event that we're not taking care of ourselves. We're taking care of everything else. Mm hmm. R look, <laughs> Michael said he's excited and he's not even going. Oh, thank you. This one is a 31 bag. My sister used to sell 31. The 31 bags. And it's really sturdy. I love it. It has like pockets everywhere. So I made sure I had my pens in there. I love that one. I have another 31 bag somewhere. I have a couple of them. <laughs> That's bad, right? I have a couple 31 bags. Um, I actually need to get some more. But I love this one because it does have a zipper. I was using it for when I travel. But right now it keeps my supplies in there. Uh, definitely want to make sure that you are... Um, you have somewhere to put all your supplies so that way you have them handy. Oh, thank you. Hey, Elder Carmen. So I'm just wrapping up. I'll do a quick recap for you guys. We were talking about, um, yep, and I got my ring light. It's over there. I'm about to put it in the bag now. <laughs> Look, Michael gonna go down the list. You got your ring lights. You got this. Which You got this. I know, I know. It's right on the table. It's charging. So, and I got my emergency charger already. Yes! I'm excited. I have my notes. I keep my notes in my phone. Um, once I do, uh, I don't usually look at them the day of too much. I may look, glance over them once or twice, but I do have my notes on my phone. And so, that part. So, thank you guys. I'm looking forward to speaking tonight. You guys will see a glimpse of it if you have not signed up for the um, the live streaming, bit.ly forward slash quit tour tickets. And you can get the live streaming. You get to see all the replays of all the cities from all the live streams. So, oh, thank you, sis. Um, definitely looking forward to it. 
Um, I'll be talking to you guys later on today. I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Speak Easy. I look forward to seeing you guys later on this evening. Don't forget to press it out.